Greetings, my name is Dylan, and this is the final chapter of the Baron's AP Economics book, Chapter 21, and I will be going over what you need to know for the AP exam. This chapter is about international trade, and you should know what the trade restrictions are, what the net export effect is, how the currency exchange rates can change, what a graph of exchange rates looks like, and what the balance of payments are. So a lot of countries around the world run what's called a trade deficit. Basically, they import more than they export. As a result, the industries in that country will suffer from competition from abroad. These countries will often implement trade restrictions to protect its own industries. And this allows industries to thrive without threat from foreign competition. It also allows smaller industries to develop and grow so they can eventually compete on a global scale. Trade restrictions also encourage economic diversity and they stop dumping or when foreign companies flood a market with underpriced goods to gain a foothold in that country's market. They come at a cost. Trade restrictions end up causing goods to be more expensive than they would be under free trade. So the next topic is about the balance of payments. And the balance of payments is made from the current account and the capital account. And the sum of these two accounts is always zero. The current account consists of the trade balance plus net investments plus net transfers. The trade balance is just the net exports or exports minus imports and net investments is how much the US people in the US make abroad subtracted from the money made paid to foreigners and net transfers is how much money the US sends abroad minus the money sent here it basically tells us where the money is going to the US or overseas and the capital account is the difference between foreign purchasing of US a assets and the US purchasing of foreign assets plus the change in official reserves. Capital accounts basically measures the net change in asset ownership for a country. And, but the most important thing you need to know for the AP test is that these two sum to zero. They'll ask you, they'll give you like a sample table with um, current account and they'll probably, and they'll ask you to calculate capital account or something. And you need to know that these two add up to zero. So the next thing you need to know is how international currency exchanges work. So the graph of, for any given currency is like a regular supply and demand graph. So here we have the graph of the dollar on the, on the right, and we have the graph of the yen on the left. <clears throat> so the demand for all currencies is downsloping because people want more of that currency at a cheaper price, and the supply is upsloping because people are more willing to supply one, uh, more of their, people are more willing to supply their currency at a higher price. The x-axis is just quantity. But the y-axis is the price of that currency times in terms of the other. So in this case, the graph of the dollar has a y-axis of the price of the dollar in yen, or how much yen for one dollar. And the yen graph has a, has a y-axis of how much dollars per one yen. Now the exchange rates for, these, for each country, for each currency, can change if the interest rates in that country change. Let's say the interest rates in the United States increase. Now suddenly, lending more money to lending money to the U.S. seems more attractive because you can make more money in return. However, the Japan can't lend yen to the U.S. because the U.S. uses currency, and they, so therefore Japan needs dollars. So they're going to buy dollars for yen, and this will increase the demand for the dollar as Japan wants more dollars than they originally wanted, and this will cause the dollar's value to appreciate, or in other terms, the dollar's worth more than before. The opposite will happen if interest rates decrease in the U.S. So the last topic relates to exchange rates. The net export effect is another negative effect of expansionary fiscal policy. When the government increases spending, this will increase interest rates in America due to high demand for lo loanable funds. This will, this will cause the demand for U.S. currency to increase as other countries want to lend more money to the U.S. And now they need more dollars. The value of the dollar will rise or appreciate meaning that U.S. goods are now relatively more expensive than goods from other countries. Exports will decrease as other countries will reduce the demand for U.S. goods and the GDP of the United States will fall as a result. However, that doesn't occur with expansionary monetary policy. When the government increases the money supply, that, that reduces interest rates, decreasing the demand for the dollar. So the dollar sinks in value as people don't want the dollar as much, meaning that U.S. goods are now relatively cheaper. You will buy more U.S. goods as a result, increasing exports to other countries. GDP increases as a result. That's the last topic in AP Economics. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something from this video.